Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Get Started Fast with Avid Media Composer for High-Res Workflows tutorial series. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about editing in high-res projects. More specifically, we're going to talk about the proxy timeline. We're going to talk about frame flex. I'm going to talk about lookup tables and how to apply them. We're going to talk a little bit more about the color management tab inside your source settings, and I'm going to show you the new color info tool. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now I have two different types of footage here. This footage here is shot in log color space on an Aria Alexa camera. You'll see I can simply hit play, it's just a man playing a xylophone. And what I also have is I have another red 4K clip here. Now I'm going to be giving you two different examples of how these are going to work into your project. Now let's talk about the first clip first. Let's talk about our Aria Alexa clip. Now you're going to notice right away that this clip here, if we take a look over here in my bin, is at 2048 by 1152. You'll see that our project is set up to be a 2K flat project at 1998 by 1080. So we're going to need to get in and make some adjustments to this clip. Now of course the big question is going to be, what do we need to adjust? Well, the first thing that's most obvious that we need to adjust is that the picture is very flat because it was shot in log color space. So we're going to need to get in and fix that so that this clip will be correct every time we add it into our timeline. And I want to talk a little bit about frame flex and how we can get more specific with framing with this shot. So again, the shot looks exactly the way that we need it to every time it goes into your timeline. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on and we're going to use this red clip and we're going to talk about dropping this into the timeline and issues you might have when you're playing back and how you can get in to correct that. So let's start with this clip first. So what I'm going to do is simply right click on it. You'll remember source settings are our best friend. Now let's talk about fixing the color with this shot first. Again, I did mention that this shot was acquired on an Aerie Alexa camera. So the fact that I know that is very beneficial because all I need to do is to tell the color encoding tab where this came from. And you'll see that I can come to the source color space because we are talking about the source clip. I'm simply going to drop this down. I'm going to scroll down and you're going to notice that I do have the option for specifically the Aerie Alexa camera with footage that was shot in log color space, log C there. All I need to do is simply select that click on auto, you'll see that that has now been applied or actually it's been attached to this clip. All I need to do now is to simply say apply and this footage is now correct. What I'm going to do is simply say okay because of course now I can call up other clips. This of course again is some red footage. I can come back to this clip and of course that color transformation has now like I said before been attached to this clip and will always be there unless I actually go in and remove it. Now let's right click again, let's come down to our source settings and let's come to the frame flex tab. Now you'll remember in the previous tutorial the first thing we always need to do when we come into frame flex is check to see what the resolution of the project that we have set up inside a Media Composer is. Now, if that resolution matches that of your clip, you really don't need to do anything inside of the FrameFlex window unless you're working with a larger than, you know, the project size clip, like for example, a 4K clip instead of a 2K project. Maybe you want to get in and really focus on specific parts of the frame. That's where FrameFlex really comes into play. But what you're always going to want to do is start out by just getting everything to be quote unquote correct. Now you'll of course notice that the project is set up for a 185 aspect ratio and our clip is set up for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is not what we want. We want those two values to match. So down inside of our frame flex adapter, what we're going to do is we're going to adapt that frame flex to be a 185 aspect ratio just like that. I'm simply going to say apply and as soon as I do, you're going to notice an update here inside of my preview window here, just like such just to make this clip look quote unquote correct. Now again, depending on the resolution of my clip, I also have the ability to get in and focus on specific parts of the shot with frame flex. So let's say for example, I wanted to focus in on the, I'm not sure what you refer to these as, we'll call them the xylophone mallets for the purpose of what we're doing. I can actually take the frame flex window and zoom right in just like this, reposition. You're going to notice the updates occurring right away down here in the bottom. So we could focus just in on him playing the xylophone. I could simply say apply and as soon as I do, 
that image is going to be updated right away. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that obviously, the more you zoom in, the more that noise is going to be introduced because you're obviously going to be focusing more, you know, zoomed in on the shot. We can only focus in so far before it obviously becomes noticeable. But what I'm going to do for the purpose of what we're doing, I'm just going to leave this shot just as such. I'm simply going to say OK, because what I want to do is I'm just going to drop in this shot of our I, th I don't think they're goldfish. I think they're actually called something different, but that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. I'm just going to refer to them as goldfish. I'm just going to drop in my xylophone player. I'll just take a different part of the fish shot here. We'll just jump down here. There we go. And I'm going to put in another instance of my xylophone player because I do want to mention, let's just pick a different part of the shot here. Why not? We'll just pick this part right here. I do want to mention that after the fact, once you have the clip in your timeline, you do have the ability to get into effects mode you can simply navigate up to the frame flex option and you can now actually adjust your frame flex window right here inside your timeline. So obviously if you have a shot that you want to reuse multiple times but want to focus in on different aspects of that shot, you can do it very quickly and very easily right here inside of your timeline. I'm just going to switch over to a 4K project. So I'm simply going to navigate up to my presets. I'm going to come down to 4K and let's pick one here that's as close to this clip as possible. Let's pick a DCI. Let's go with a full project 4096 by 2160, which is pretty darn close at 23976 frames per second. Okay. I'm simply going to take the clip. I'm going to drag and drop it in here. Let's pick a good chunk of it here. We'll just pick that much of it. I'm going to drop it into my timeline. Now, what most people like to do with Link2 Media is they think that they can throw any Link2 Media, any clip at any timeline and work with it. Unfortunately, that's not the way Linking2 works inside of Media Composer because, again, there are many factors that need to be taken into account. In this case, we're dealing with a 4K red clip that I've just linked to and dropped into this timeline. You'll see that if I come back and I try to hit play and have this play back in real time, it's just not going to happen on my system. You'll see that we're getting lots and lots of dropped frames. Well, this is where we can make some adjustments to our timeline to help fix this issue. Now, the first thing that we're going to adjust is right down here at the bottom of our timeline. We're going to get to the video quality option. I'm simply going to click on it. You'll notice now that we have a little 10 symbol in there, which represents 10 bit, which we don't want. You'll see that we have draft quality, which I can now come back. I can simply hit play on the keyboard. We're getting better playback. It's not great, it's better. And you'll see that at our standard quality here, our situation really hasn't improved. Really at low quality here, which is a full yellow, we got the best playback. Now most people think, okay, well if that's your best playback, we got a bit of a problem, we have to transcode. No, that's not true. Because inside of version 8.4 of Media Composer, we have what's referred to as the proxy timeline. Now, how does the proxy timeline work? Well, the proxy timeline lets you adjust the quality of the timeline based on the type of footage that's in your timeline so that you can get the best possible performance out of Media Composer without having to transcode. So where do we have access to this? Well, it's located right up here in the Format tab, and it's right here, Proxy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my timeline quality on low. I'm simply going to drop this down and I'm going to change the resolution down to a quarter. You'll see that instead of being at 4096 by 2160, I'm going to drop this down to be at 2048 by 1080. Now, as soon as I do that, let me just switch this back. Take a look at what actually happens over here inside of my sequence window when I change the quality. There's a noticeable change, but to be honest, it's not really that much. And if you're working in an offline situation, this is going to give you even better playback than we had before. Take a look at that. Now, this is almost real time. We get a couple drop frames in there, but this is pretty darn good. And if I wanted to take this one step further, what I have the ability to do is to take this down to 1 16th. Now, as soon as I do, the quality gets pretty bad, but take a look at this. I'm going to hit play. We get full real time playback now. And so if I take a look at this and I say, well, Kev, you know what? This is actually playing back in real time. You know, the quality is not that great, so maybe we have to stick with it. Well, no. Well, this is where we can come down right down here and we can play around with the video quality of our timeline to get the best possible performance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at standard quality. Let's come back and let's give this a play. Oh, not quite. Looks like in the case that we're in, what we're going to need to do is we're going to stick with 1 16th quality at low resolution to get the best possible playback in real time from this link to clip. 
Now, I know you're probably thinking, Kev, why would we even have this as an option in Media Composer? What's important to keep in mind is that the development team wants to make sure that 4K editing is easily accessible to everyone, no matter what type of system that you're working on. Even if you have a low-end system, you have the ability to get in and work in real time without having to transcode any of this media in your timeline. Obviously, scale that all the way up to the best system, you can get in and make adjustments in your timeline very quickly and very easily to get even better quality playback in real time with Link2 Media simply at the hit of the spacebar. Okay, now another important aspect of your workflow, especially in larger than HD projects, especially when working with cameras like the Arri Alexa and a RED camera is lookup tables. Now the question is, how do we apply them? Well, there's two ways that you can apply lookup tables inside of Media Composer. Much like with color transformations, these lookup tables can be applied to the original source clip. So for example, if you wanted to make sure that every time a specific clip was dropped into a timeline, it always had that lookup table attached to it, we can apply that inside of source settings. Or we have the ability to get in and apply lookup tables directly to a clip as an effect. So the question is, how do we get these lookup tables into Media Composer? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to my footage bin and let's just go with this Airy Alexa shot right here. Now I'm just gonna set my timeline back to be full quality, there we go. And we're gonna get rid of the frame flex, frame flex from here as well. So let's right click on our clip, let's come down to source settings. Uh, let's come back to frame flex and I'm just gonna reset this back to where it was. Now we know that the aspect ratio should be 1.90 to one. So let's just come down to 1.90 and we'll just say apply so that the shot looks the way that it should. Okay, now to add a lookup table into your project is very simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come to the color encoding option inside of the source settings and you're gonna navigate down here to the color management settings. Now inside of the color management settings you're gonna see that I actually already have two lookup tables that I've brought in. Now to bring them in is very simple. All you need to do is to figure out, first of all, do you want this lookup table to be associated with a project or a shared lookup table? Or of course, you can have it as both. But most importantly, what you're gonna to wanna to do is to select the lookup table. Now, of course, the two lookup tables I've already brought in, but the three types of files or the three types of lookup tables that you can bring in are .txt, .xml, and .cube. Now on my desktop, inside of my folders here, you'll see that I actually have the lookup tables right here. I can actually come into the log one and there's a .cube file that I can bring in by simply saying open. Let's just come all the way back up here. I'm gonna come to my color grading pack here, or pardon me, my ground control one right here, and you'll see there's a lookup table right there with some additional formats in here as well, depending on the program that you happen to be using it with. So I could simply select this, I could say open, and it will appear right here under project, under shared, or under both, depending on what you have selected. Now, if you want to attach this to your clip, all you need to do is to simply, in your color encoding window, come right here. We're just gonna drop this down. We're gonna come right down here, and you're gonna see that as I drag down here, there is one of those lookup tables right there. I can simply select it, I can say add, and you see that the clip gets updated immediately inside of the preview window. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that. Let's get the name of the other one here, IWLT. So let's just come back in here. Let's come down, let's find IWLT, which will be located right here. I'm now simply gonna say add. I'm simply going to say okay, or let's say apply. You'll see it gets updated immediately, and now this will be attached every time I drop this clip into my timeline. So of course the question is, how do we apply this as an effect? Well, let's apply it to our, our I believe these fish are called koi. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add an edit in here. Let's come into our effects palette right here by simply hitting Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. We're gonna come down to the image section and you'll see that we have a new effect called, simply enough, color lookup table. Now once we've added those lookup tables inside of the source settings window, we actually have access to them right here inside of the effect by simply coming to the available lookup tables and here are the two that I just added. So I could simply choose the IWLT lookup table and as soon as I switch to it, it's applied immediately. Of course, I could switch this back to the other one just like that and of course at any time, we can simply turn it off. So you'll see that getting in and applying lookup tables to the actual clip or as an effect is very simple and can be done in a matter of seconds with a simple click of the mouse.
Now, I always talk about a lot of great under the hood hidden features inside a media composer that you might not even know are there. One thing that I like to use all the time is my target masks. Now, why would I use that? Well, sometimes I need to know what the aspect ratio of a shot is because I need to mask it out because maybe it's going for the digital cinema and I need to see what's not going to be shown in the frame. Well, I can do that very easily by navigating over here to the format tab and coming down to my mask margins. Now, right now my mask margin is set to 2.39 to one. Let's just change that. Let's put our mask margin at, let's just say 235 to one, which is a very common aspect ratio in film. What I'm gonna do is simply say apply and you'll notice that nothing seems to have happened. I'm gonna say okay, but I don't see any target mask. I don't see anything actually happening inside of my sequence window. Well, what's important to keep in mind is that the target mask is a toggle. What I'm gonna do is right click and right down here, you'll see the target mask. I can set this to be a black mask. And now I'm gonna be shown exactly what a 235 aspect ratio is in my shot. This comes in very handy if I want to see what's not going to be seen inside of that aspect ratio. Now the other cool thing that I want to show you, the other under the hood feature inside a Media Composer when right clicking on the sequence window is the display color space option. Now you'll see that we can get in and change the display's color space to be the project, which is what the default setting is. Now if I set this to project, what this is matching is the project's color space right over here. What I can also do is simply right click. I can change the display's color space to be Rec. 709, or we do have some other options in here as well of Rec. 709 full range, sRGB, and DCI P3. Again, another great under the hidden feature that you might not know is there, but can be very beneficial depending on your workflow. Okay, now the last tool that I wanna show you here, I'm just gonna turn off the target mask, is the color info tool. Color info tool, another fantastic feature added most recently inside a Media Composer, You'll notice it right here, color info. I'm simply gonna click on it because how many times have you been asked by a client, you know, hello editor, can you tell me what the RGB value is of a specific element or part of a shot? Well, with the color info tool, that's no problem. How many times have you had to match a title to a specific color? Well, all I need to do is to simply grab the mouse and drag it over any part of the shot and I'm gonna be given the RGB value of that element instantaneously. A very fantastic tool that I now use all the time, especially when it comes to titling or even Photoshop or After Effects work, so I can quickly get in and match RGB values literally by a simple mouse drag over. Okay, now in our next lesson, we're gonna do a custom frame size project. I'm gonna use the example of Instagram because more and more editors find themselves editing for mobile, and in this case, Instagram is a perfect example of that, where Instagram has a square aspect ratio. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the project up, we're gonna set our footage up to work with it, and we're gonna drop some clips into a timeline so that I can show you how we can not only get in and set the footage up, but we can tailor that footage exactly as we need it in our timeline, so that it's gonna come out correct every time. <laughs>